Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead Brooklyn, and we're going to answer a lot of your questions today about orchids, but not the traditional ones that we often see at grocery stores, but the terrestrial ones like these vanilla orchids. So we're here at Steve's Leaves and we're going to be talking to the operations manager, Darren, all about terrestrial orchid care. So join me on this week's episode of Plant One On Me, Field Trip Edition. So Darren, tell us a little bit, because I know orchids are, they're a big family and some people get a little scared about having orchids in their home. We're going to have, we have some terrestrial orchids here, but just give us a little overview of the, the orchid family. Yeah, orchids are actually the largest family of plants in the whole world. Uh, they consist of over 25,000 different mm -hmm. species and of course the hybrids are just um, beyond that. Most orchids that people think of are like the Phalaenopsis and Cattleyas, and those are epiphytes. They grow in trees. Uh, they're n by no means do they uh, suck any energy from the trees. They're not parasitic at all. They just use them as hosts. These that we're talking about today are terrestrial orchids. They actually grow in the ground, and we have the beautiful jewel orchids here. This is just uh, one example. There's another one of a solid black form. Uh, I actually prefer this one here because it's got a little more color, but these are very easy to take care of. Uh, you'll just pop them up in uh, regular potting media. They don't really need anything specific uh, care-wise like uh, epiphytic orchids that need bark and stuff like this. And normal um, fertilizer will work as well on these too. But they aren't really known for their blooms so much. They will bloom once a year. They put up a with uh, little white flowers on it uh, and they're enjoyable to what see but uh, they're really mainly grown for their foliage. Yeah which I love I mean I think the foliage is just so uh, gorgeous and I know some of the jewel orchids I have uh, a few different I think the McCoides are they have these really beautiful lightning strike ones that look almost like a little golden um, which are really quite great I never see them this big though so this one's like a generous a generous specimen yeah these are some of our stock plants of course uh, we grow them out to this state and then we we actually take cuttings off of them and pot them up and uh, that's what you get to take home then we get to uh, grow them out again and uh, and do the same thing over and over again and what's the best way to actually take a cutting because i do have a couple at home that look a little stemmy that i feel like i could cut back but what's the best way to take a cutting of this one it, it's very easy you just want to get a, a healthy stem and you can see this one's bent over. Mm -hmm. I would just cut it right here uh, and leave uh, at least uh, the full top leaf section. You can take off these two bottom leaves and you just stick it in some dirt, water it in. I'd keep it a little extra humid until it got rooted, but uh, it, it should take off. And then what do we have here? Uh, these are vanilla planifora. There's three different types here. And I don't think a lot of people realize that this is the plant that that delicious ice cream flavor is uh, known for, uh, vanilla. It's uh, the only orchid that produces any kind of cash crop. Uh, it's a native to Mexico uh, and South America. Um, they grow up trees. Uh, it will bloom once it gets about 12 foot tall. Uh, so uh, unless you got a really big house, uh, it's going to be uh, kind of hard to get it that big but uh and you would have to hand pollinate it if you ever wanted the beans off of it because uh, there are specific insects to a lot of orchids that only one insect will pollinate most all vanilla is hand pollinated and and orchids don't pollinate uh, like normal flowers there's no powdery pollen it's actually a sac that has to be removed and then implanted in a column Fascinating. Um, but we have three different varieties here. We have a full Albo variegati form, we have a uh, standard variegated form, and a green one. And as you can tell by these three uh, plants, these were probably all started at the same time and you can see the growth difference due to the amount of uh, variegation in the orchid. Yeah, it's fascinating, like the proof is in the pudding, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then also with, uh, with these, you said that they grow up, you know, trees. Is it better if you have them in your home to like hang down or do their leaves get bigger as they grow up um, on, the, on the tree if you give them something to kind of... They don't get a whole lot bigger. The leaves get maxed out at about three or four inches, um, but they do do better if you give them something to grow up instead of hanging down because uh, they want to go up. In fact, you can see these roots right here that are along the stems. Yes. These are aerial roots and they actually also grab a hold of the tree and grow into the tree 
and uh, just hang on for dear life with that. And are these grown very similarly in a condition to this, or do these want brighter light, or how does this, how does that work? These are actually in the same bay here in the greenhouse, so they both grow under the same light conditions. It is bright, indirect sunlight. Of course, the green can take a lot more light than the variegated forms, so you could put this in a higher light situation where I wouldn't put these in one. And would these lose their variegation though if you have it too oh, too far away from, from light? No, they will not lose their variegation. Interesting, okay. Can you follow kind of the, some of the same rules too? Will, will, the, will it eventually just turn green? They or? can. These, are, these seem to be a little more stable than other plants though. Fascinating. Uh, you will see that some of this is, is got more variegation to it, more white to it, and it goes by the same thing on the stem. Yeah. But all of these seem to always uh, stay variegated. We very rarely get um, solid green. Interesting, so a much more stable plant. Well, for anybody who's into orchids and maybe are not so fascinated by the flowers of orchids, but really want some interesting leaves or some interesting varieties, then these I think are um, such incredible species to do, these terrestrial species. So thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. Steve's Leaves has been growing unique varieties of houseplants for over 41 years. You can check out all of his fancy foliage at stevesleaves.com. Hey guys, so hopefully you found that inspirational and informative all about terrestrial orchid care. And of course, if you don't want to miss an episode, tune in here every week and subscribe and follow along on my Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and on homesteadbrooklyn.com. Ciao! Vanilla, I'm like terrestrial orchid care. <laughs>